Hello, good afternoon, and thanks so much for tuning in to the Market Wrap on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Alex Matthew. Now, you glance at the benchmarks and the headline numbers, and you think that it's another day of gains and continued strength being shown after yesterday's stellar finish. But you look a little deeper and you see that the performance today is very, very different. So let's pull up the MRR function and see what the key contributors are. For most of the session, you actually had more losers on the Nifty than gainers. And in fact, that is how we ended the session as well. A little bit of uh, uh, increased selling towards the end of the session. But if you look at the top of your screen, you'll see a few names there. You'll see HTFC, you'll see HTFC Bank. You saw. So essentially, you'll see the HTFC Twins, you see Bajaj Finance, and you see uh, Devi's Lab. But the first three that I mentioned are essentially the heavy hitters that have pulled the Nifty by the scuff of its neck into the green today. And that's the reason, along with Reliance Industries, why the Nifty has ended in the green. Because if you look at the losers, and before, of course, we talk about the loser, you have to talk about Divi's lab. It ended very strong. And I think Nikki is going to talk to you a little bit more about what uh, the benchmark, or, or rather, what the milestones that were hit for Divi's lab today. But if you look at the losers, you actually have over 30 losers in today's session compared with just about 13 losers in yesterday's session. And that could just be some of the profit taking uh, that you would see in the frontline stocks on account of a lot of them being quite highly valued at this point with the benchmarks at all time highs or close to that point, at least. Hindustan Unilever, perhaps the loser with the biggest weight ending close to the low point of the day. But Though there were some losses, and uh, like I said, over 30 losers, they weren't heavy. So on balance, we still managed to end in the green. But Nikki is joining me now, and Nikki has uh, quite a bit to tell you, in fact, about Divi's Lab, which ended up being the top performer on the Nifty. Uh, thanks, uh, Nifty. Uh, I'm saying, sorry, uh, Nikki, thanks for joining me today. Uh, what are you picking up on Divi's? And if you're not the first one to address me, Nifty, so I'm going to leave it on that. But then, yeah, DV's lab, it's been one of the great performers that we've seen, at least on the Census Index or Nifty Index as a whole. You know, the shares touched a record high level. If you talk about the market capitalization, that crossed one crore, one lakh crore mark, which is an essential milestone overall for the company. And in fact, if you look at the YPT performance, it's the best performing stock so far for this year. Not just done well on the entire Nifty 50 index, but has also done well as compared to its other peers in the pharmaceutical basket as a whole. Net net, it's a good, it's a strong performance coming in from DV's lab for the entire year, not just for the trading session. But in today's trigger point, um, the companies, the stock rather, is going to be uh, you know included in the Sensex rebalance adjustments, which is going to take place tomorrow and would be effective since December 21st. Uh, it's expected that the inclusion would be to an weight of around 1.2 percent overall of the Sensex index, and with this uh, flows to an extent of 75 to 80 million dollars expected into the stock because of which you're seeing some amount of adjustment already taking place and market probably sensing that information and making some move out of it um that's that in terms of dv's lab but then uh, alex i'm going to quickly come back to you and ask you about the mid cap trend anything specific that you're picking up i would rather speak about the broader markets nikki and it's interesting that you point that out because uh, it there is uh, quite a bit of a trend that is building in those, and that has been building for quite a while now. But if you look at the sectoral performers, uh, you have the banking index, you have the Nifty Realty index, as well as the pharma index that stood out as far as the performance today. Pretty much all of the other sectoral indices saw losses, though. But some interesting stories developing uh, on the QSR front as well. Before we do that, let's pull up the MOV function and just look at the market breadth because I think the market breadth reflects what you saw on the Nifty. You had quite a bit of losers on the screen. In fact, that's what you're seeing on the screen here as well. Uh, among the losers, you actually have a few that have gained significantly in the recent past, not least of which uh, SpiceJet, which has lost about 3.5% today. It has been in focus of late. Steel Authority of India also losing about 4.3%. But if you look a little closer at the gainers, you'll see Jubilant Foodworks 
uh, over there with gains of 4.8%. And Nikki does have something to say about that. But before I, I hand it back to her for Jubilant, I do want to point out Burger King, which is the latest entrant uh, on this on the bourses. And in fact, uh, quite an interesting story if you followed it on listing day with regard to the gains. If you pull up the intraday chart for Burger King today, you'll see that it started off at the upper circuit of 10%. And if uh, you look at around the two to uh, the two p.m. mark is when the stock actually nosedived and it actually ended the day at a lower circuit. Uh, uh, essentially, some traders getting uh, caught on the wrong end of the trend there, but uh, finally some selling being seen in Burger King, which just saw continuous gains in the first couple of days of listing. But uh, I mentioned there are a few themes that are building in the QSR space, Nikki. You have uh, a few updates on Jubilant. Yeah, so Jubilant Foodworks, clearly, you know, the stock rallied quite a bit in today's trade uh, after the company reported on the exchanges that it's going to be pouring into the biryani business. That's the rice business. And uh, that's under the brand Igdam, which is with the price starting from 99 uh, rupees. So that's one bit of development which is coming in from Jubilant. And of course, the pizza maker is now. Uh, you know, operating into a different segment as a whole, which is expected to be, you know, contributor to the revenue, significant revenue upside. You know, in the last past trading sessions, you've, you've seen rice makers doing extremely well in trade. Uh, the commodity as a whole has witnessed significant uptake that we've seen in the last two, three months as a whole. But apart from that, what I'd like to talk about is Lao Upala, where Munash Network Capital has initiated a buy rating on the counter uh, with a target price of nearly 380 rupees. A couple of things that are working in the favor of the company right now. You have the established track records, ongoing premiumization. You have the wide product range. And at this point of time, the company remains to be poised to rise the increasing socioeconomic tailwinds. Apart from that, talk about the financials, be it in terms of uh, debt-free balance sheet, the cash flows, or for that matter, EBITDA margin would seem to be marching just northward. So that's a few of the positive coming in for La Upala. But I'd like to talk about uh, IPO updates here because, um, you know, the, the IPO that has garnered a lot of uh, interest right now is Mrs. Vectors, which is doing quite well. And, you know, the IPO has been subscribed, substantial, oversubscribed rather on the final final day. But uh, you know what, Alex, I'm going to toss it on to you and ask you about uh, things that you'd like to watch out for in tomorrow's session. You know, uh, before I get to that very quick point on uh, Jubilant Foodworks, because I did speak uh, to uh, Avinash Gorakshakar this morning on Jubilant, and he had a few interesting points to make. So if uh, you're tuning into this and you're interested in finding out what the impact of that foray into the biryani business would be, uh, do have a look at that. You'd find it on any one of our social media platforms. But tomorrow, Nikki, to answer your question, I am looking forward to this buyback that TCS has announced. It kicks off tomorrow. Remember, it's 16,000 crore rupees at 3,000 rupees per share. So it's a significant upside uh, even to the closing price of today, which is, by the way, 30% higher in the year-to-date period. So quite a lot to look forward to in uh, tomorrow's session as well. Uh, there you have it. It's uh, the trend line that you're seeing uh, for the year-to-date period for Tata Consultancy Services. Of course, there's a lot that is building up in the monetary policy space globally, and we're watching out for that as well, which is a perfect opportunity, Nikki, for me to hand it over to you to take a check of the global markets. Well, at this point of time, European markets are clearly trading positive. And if you look at the U.S. stock futures, there's a mixed picture source, you know, right now for European market, a couple of things are working in the favor of the market, being in terms of the progress that we've seen in Brexit negotiation, the U.S. stimulus talk, or for that matter, the Bank of England latest policy setting meeting, which is expected to uh, take place later today. It's widely expected to refrain from yet more stimulus coming in, but then that remains to be seen what the decision-making process finally looks like. But with this, it's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching.